So what's going on YouTube? Welcome to your third intermediate JavaScript tutorial in which we're going to discuss what is the difference between arrow functions and normal functions. And actually I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to arrow functions as well if you do not know that. So very important thing. First of all, if you're watching this video and if you haven't watched how this works in JavaScript, that this keyword, this keyword, which is my video number two, there's a link in the description go ahead and watch this first because you won't be able to relate a lot if you do not really watch that video because we're going to use a lot of stuff from that video if you have if you however let me just go ahead and create a simple question for you if you're able to answer this question then you do not really need to watch this so i'm just going to say let a is object.simple and uh, Let's see. So I'm going to say two statements. Object.simple is equal to window. And consider that we are running this code inside a browser. So we do have window available, right? I'm going to run A is window. So if you know the answer to this question, what would be the outputs, then you're good to go. You can watch this video. If not, just go ahead and watch that. So anyway, let's just get into it, the topic of the video, which is arrow functions. So arrow functions is a way in JavaScript to declare functions only, but it's a new way, you can say. So our old way was function, my function, here we go. The new way says const, my function, or any other variable name, is these two curly brackets, not really curly, parenthesis, then a pair of curly braces there we go so what it does is basically it creates an arrow function now the difference between these two is significant I would rather say so there's something known as hoisting in JavaScript hoisting basically means that I can do things like I can just say return 100 right inside my function and I can I can execute this function before actually declaring it so if you see such a code in languages like C or C++ this is a violation you need to provide at least a prototype of that function before you you know declare or execute it right but in JavaScript what happens is you can run that function before declaring it so what's happening here essentially is a concept known as hoisting in JavaScript which where what happens is JavaScript takes this whole function cuts it and pastes it at the very top of your file right so if you have a function let's say if you have a lot of code and a lot of code again and you have a function here then what JavaScript would do is take this function paste it here and you know run the code then so functions are hoisted in JavaScript right similarly var var keyword is also hosted now what do i mean by that is let's see so i'm going to do um let's say i'm going to do console log of x and var keyword is only hosted it's it's you can say it's declaration is hosted it's initialization is not so i'm just going to show you what i mean by that so i did a console log of x and i said var x of 100 so we got undefined why is that well, in JavaScript, as I said, var declaration is hosted. So what JavaScript does, hmm, we find a var keyword here. I'm going to take this var and I'm going to paste it right here and say it like this. Okay, so we have hosted the declaration, but the initialization stays there. So basically, your code some, looks something like this. This code right here is equivalent to this code, right? So you see we get undefined because if we don't do it if hosting is not there then you're just going to simply get an error that x is not defined right but uh, we do not get any errors because of hosting because x is well defined but it's undefined right you know you get the idea all right so what the heck does this mean anything to arrow functions well you see that you cannot define arrow functions with keyword function right this is something which does not really work 
arrow functions have to be defined with const, let, or var. And the thing with let and uh, you know const is they are not hosted, so you cannot have um, you know you cannot do console log x, and you can cannot say const x is hundred. You cannot run this. You know you get x is not defined. So these declarations are not really hosted, right? So if you create a arrow function like this which returns me let's say 100 if i run this you know i'm always going to get an error even with var because var obviously takes the initial takes the declaration but it does not take the initialization so you cannot really call an undefined function right so with uh, with var we get x is not a function right so the first difference is um, arrow functions are not hoisted that means they would stay where they are declared they would run at that particular moment only the second function which relates to the previous video is this in arrow function is uh, you know bound or binded to the parent or basically how it's not really bound how you're calling this but it's bound to the previous value of this so i should rather write the previous value of this so what do i mean by that let us see so let us create an object here again i'm gonna say this is some method and remember when you when we create a method like this this is this code is actually equivalent to doing some method then a function right this is not an arrow function notation it's just a shorthand for this particular line right so to create an arrow function here i would need to do something like this and now i can say return this so now if i create var a is uh, you know object dot some method and uh, if i console dot log a and if i console dot log object dot some method hit save run both of these we see we get similar um, empty object and why is that that is because this is actually bound to the parent of uh, this object you can say so if we console log this right here you're gonna see that we get the same empty object so when you call this with uh, you know extracting its function or you call it with the object it does not really matter to it this value inside an arrow function basically takes the value which this would have if the arrow function was not there let me repeat it and actually write it as well so the value of this inside an arrow function is basically what its value would have been outside the arrow function right if it makes sense so outside the arrow function we get you know this particular environment the scope so we saw that this right here is curly braces therefore no matter how we call it this is important it does not matter how you reach to this object you reach to the sum method via extracting it or calling it directly this would always always refer to the value of this outside the R function um, let's see if I can create some more fun example here so let us see what we can do okay so let's create a function Let's create a function. My function, uh, which returns us an arrow function, interestingly, right? Which returns us this, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and say constant my object is new my function, and I'm just gonna console log my object. Hit save. Um, we get a function because here yeah, obviously we need to execute it okay so you see it points to my function 
right? So this right here pointed, or actually, to actually make it more interesting, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you what would happen if I write new here. So before actually asking that question, I was just completing my sentence that this right here points to my function. Remember, we studied that if we use new keyword, this inside a function would point to that particular object. So in this case, it's pointing to my obj, my object, right? Okay, so what should be the case if you use new with arrow function? Think about it. Well, it turns out that you can't. So if you're using arrow functions, you cannot use this, you cannot use new keyword with it because arrow functions are created in such a way that the value inside them, the value of this inside them points to its parent. So they do not really have a constructor. For the moment, you can just remember that you cannot use new keyword with arrow function. So you cannot have like const my function is something and then you do new my function. This would not really work. If you want to use new keyword, if you want to create a variable this, because uh, if you want to create a variable this, as I said, you're gonna make use of the function keyword. And even this is intuitive to think about. You see that this inside a function can refer to a lot of values depending on how it is called, right? So if I call it like, uh, you know, just like I said, just like I showed you with new keyword, it refers to this object. If I call it like this, it refers to the global scope. But remember, inside your arrow function, this always refers to a single value that is what the value of its parent is, right? So if you do something like this with arrow function, it changes the value of this, which shall not really happen, right? So the specification does not allow new keyword with this. So the second function, the second difference we had is that this in arrow function is bound binded to the previous value of this. Um, this basically has uh, implications in set timeout and stuff. And I'm gonna show you why that is the case. So, okay, let's go ahead and create a simple car. So I'm gonna say function my car, right? Um, which has a property of fuel, right? So I'm gonna initialize the fuel to zero. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, let us say, we have uh, this dot refuel method, which is, you know, fuels our car again after, um, let's say, one second. So it takes one second to refuel our car. And there we go. And we can just say console.log refueled and we can say current fuel is this dot fuel right all right so what typically you would do is you're gonna say const um, you know Bugatti let's own a Bugatti I'm gonna say new my car right and then I'm gonna say Bugatti dot refuel and what happens is if I run this code um, okay oh obviously this is not a function we need to make this a function right All right, so now if I run this code, you're gonna see we get refueled, current fuel is not a number. All right, so what just happened there? Well, let us see what's happening step by step. So you create Bugatti, new my car, fair enough. The this inside, um, you know, this function now points to this particular Bugatti object. So this right here refers to my car. Once you enter this function right here, if you try to console log this here, Let's do that. You're gonna see that we are still referring to the correct this because obviously we called it, called this Bugatti refuel using Bugatti, right? Remember how we call this function using Bugatti object. So it refers to the correct object, fair enough. But the set timeout, the set timeout actually runs after one second. 
So the set timer when it calls this particular function which you have passed, it does not call this function through this Bugatti object. It just independently calls it. So what happens is that this inside the set timeout does not really refer to your, you know, this object anymore. Does that make sense? Surely it should, right? So what happens now is your this right here, the context of this is lost. So a typical hack which people used to do earlier was to, you know, set the value of this to this and then you can just use this right here. And if you run this, you're going to see um, Okay. Oh, obviously, we need this here as well. All right, so you see, we get the correct output now. That current fuel is 100, in fact. But as I said with arrow functions, this in arrow function is binded to the previous value, no matter what. You always have to think about, think like that. So no matter what, once you use arrow function, this inside would always refer to its parent's value, its previous value, right? So now if you use this right here, you see we get the correct output because remember the golden rule of arrow functions, whenever you use this, it does not care how it is called, you know, in this case set timeout calls it after one second, independently it does not really matter. You have to figure out where this, where this arrow function is placed, what is the value of this outside that. In our case, it's referring to the particular object, therefore, you know, you get the value of this as this particular object. So I think that was a very decent introduction. Not really, I would not say it's an introduction, but it's mostly all of it, what you need to know for arrow functions. And there might be a little syntax stuff as well. For example, you can really omit these curly braces with arrow functions. If you have simple functions like cons multiply, takes an x, um, just returns it by squaring and you can just console log multiply 5 remove this save node you know we get 25 you see I'm not using curly parentheses here if you have a single argument you can skip that if you have just a single return statement you can skip the curly braces so you are flexible there right so that that's just a little syntax in enhancement in arrow functions but the meat of the tutorial is what i covered inside you know second point so that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and if you did then don't forget to subscribe leave a like press the bell icon whatever and uh, i'll see you then in the next video